Somewhere in a parallel world, a small tribe called the Begamini is forced to live under the oppression of another tribe, led by the cruel chief Zotan. They eat their own kind and constantly hunt the Begamini, who believe that someday a savior will descend from the sky to liberate them. In our time lives an ordinary man named Remy Bassano, a father of two children. At some point, Remy felt like the floor began to suck him in. Meanwhile, the shamans of the Begamini tribe are attempting to summon the savior. Lucille, Remy's wife, informed him of her plans to travel to Barcelona for work this weekend. Remy is displeased that his wife devotes so much time to her career, but Lucille is only trying to provide for the family. While the Begamini await their savior, Remy once again felt himself sinking into the couch. Lately, this sensation has been haunting him frequently. There is a lack of understanding between husband and wife. Lucille is ambitious, while Remy being a museum painting restorer is not focused on success. He needs his wife, but she is often away from home. The Begamini are preparing for a ritual. Before going to sleep, Remy wanted attention from his wife, but she said she had to get up too early in the morning. As the Begamini performed their ritual, Remy felt the bed sucking him in. Remy is a loser in life. People constantly neglect him or simply don't notice. Because of his lack of character, he often encounters problems. Lucille has a lot of work, so she brought the children to the husband's workshop. The daughter and son constantly played around, distracting their father from work. When several hours later Lucille came for them, Remy had forgotten to turn off the tap before leaving. The shaman is preparing to open the doors between worlds. The savior could appear anywhere. In Remy's workshop, there was a flood. He desperately tried to save the client's paintings, despite there being many electrical appliances in the room. Suddenly Remy was sucked underwater. When he resurfaced, he found himself in another world. Remy didn't understand what was happening. A few minutes later, savages speaking an unknown language ran ashore. When Remy dived back into the water, he found himself back in his workshop. Unfortunately, Remy's insurance won't cover all the losses. Furthermore, today his wife informed him that she has fallen in love with someone else and wants a divorce. This news came as an absolute shock to Remy. Lucille introduced her husband to her lover and colleague, Antoine Geller, who is planning to move in here. Remy went to the parents' house and immediately told all the relatives about the divorce and job loss. When Remy went to the kitchen to make coffee, the cat, which wanted to jump on the refrigerator, suddenly froze in midair. Remy was puzzled. The lights in the house began to flicker, and all objects, like the cat, froze in space. Remy fell through the floor to the lower level, and then he was sucked into a bottomless pit. Thus Remy found himself in another world again. Seeing a group of people, he approached them and asked what place this was. The savages spoke in an unknown language. When they chased after him, Remy ran away. He tried to call the police, but of course there is no cellular service here. Unknowingly, Remy ran into Zotan's lair. Tripping and falling, he found himself back in the kitchen of the parents' house and caused a mess, breaking his mother's favorite coffee maker. Remy went to the hospital, but the examination revealed no abnormalities. When Remy told the doctor that he had been to another world, and a time difference on the clocks confirmed it, the doctor thought Remy had a concussion. Lucille allowed him to stay in the house until he finds himself a place to live. The worst part is that Remy now has to pay compensation to all the clients for the ruined paintings, and the landlord refused to rent him the space further. Some clients intend to go to court. Suddenly the world around Remy froze, and he started sinking into the floor again, ending up in the parallel world. The barbarians welcomed him, calling him the savior in their language. These people believe that Remy will give them the strength to resist Zotan. The savages dubbed Remy the Butterfly King and urged him to take off. Of course gravity did its job, and Remy fell, hitting the ground hard. When the priest gave Remy a magical fruit, he tasted it and began to understand the language of the Begamini. Thus Remy learned that he is the Chosen One, and according to prophecy, must save the tribe from Zotan. Remy was taken to a tower and shown Zotan's village from above, and Remy must destroy the village with his superpower. Of course Remy has no superpower and has no intention of saving anyone. He already has plenty of problems without that. When the barbarians threatened to throw Remy off the tower, he shouted that he agreed to fight Zotan alongside them. The problem is that Remy has no idea how to do that. As before, Remy returned to his world again. Apparently, time flows completely differently here and there. The insurance agent and others wondered where Remy got a watermelon in his hands. Of course no one, not even his friend Serge Vitali, believes his story about traveling between worlds. A sweet girl named Delphine, one of the clients, approached Rennie and asked about her painting. Rennie promised to have everything ready by Friday. However, Delphine was worried not only about the painting but also about Remy, who was going through a rough patch. In search of answers, Rennie went to the library, but it turned out that neither the Begamini tribe nor Zotan existed. Remy was also interested in books on self-defense. From that day on, he started practicing sports to be able to resist Zotan. He also shared his plans to change his occupation with Lucille. Remy was tired of being a craftsman. 
Soon once again, he found himself in the parallel world and received a sacred sword to fight Zojan. It seems that Rennie has no choice now. The tribe's inhabitants believe in various omens and legends. Rennie urged them to abandon superstitions and stop being afraid. Only then could they find freedom. Many believe that the savior possesses supernatural powers, but of course Remy cannot fly, move mountains or make the sunset come faster. In the forest they came upon Zotan's men. Remy was determined, unlike the Begamini who were ready to flee at any moment. Although Remy didn't know how to use the sword, he managed to resist Zotan's people, taking the life of one of them. None of the Begamini dared to intervene. When the danger passed, as tradition dictates, the Begamini were going to cook the fallen enemy to obtain his power. Upon hearing this, Remy was horrified and said that this was not the way to do it. The Begamini were amazed at how Remy fought back against the enemy, but on the other hand they feared war. Remy assured that he would save them. In his world, he went to the library and took many books on the art of warfare. Remy is also curious if a bulletproof vest can protect against arrows. After buying a bulletproof vest, Remy began studying the principles of tactics and strategy from the greatest commanders in history. The children wanted their father to play with them, but he asked them not to distract him. It was time to put theory into practice because Zotan's troops were preparing to attack. As a commander, Remy addressed his own army with an inspiring speech. They believe that if they act together tomorrow, they can win and get rid of Zotan's oppression. Remy even acquired a concubine, the beauty Kara. Before tomorrow's battle, Remy wants to relax, so he instructed Bali from his tribe to bring six more women. Bali would like to stay with the leader, but Remy intended to keep all the pleasure for himself. He had imagined such a thing all his life. Surrounded by beauties, Remy felt on top of the world. However, thoughts of his wife troubled him. Despite everything, Remy still loves Lucille. Right now, he just wants someone to listen to him, and the girls were willing to help him. Hearing the son's voice, Remy returned to his world. Little Theo couldn't sleep because he didn't want his parents to separate. Remy encouraged the son, saying that life is much more complicated than it seems. After that, Remy tried to return to the world of barbarians, but for some reason he couldn't. So not wanting to waste time in vain, Rennie began practicing fencing and accidentally broke the refrigerator door. When Rennie was peacefully reading a book, the couch sucked him in. It wasn't the most opportune moment because Rennie found himself in the midst of battle without the sword and bulletproof vest. Several days passed in this world, while for Rennie and his world, it had been no more than an hour. Remy ordered his troops to retreat and climb as high as possible on the hill. Under Remy's leadership, the barbarians gathered branches, while he devised tactics for the next battle. His right-hand man Rhyme Kiel assisted him. At night, when Zotan's man made camp and fell asleep, at Remy's command, the Begamini dragged a large hollow tree here. Knowing that the enemies were not accustomed to waking up early, Remy climbed the tree at dawn and began to wake everyone up. The enraged warriors chased after Remy, on whom spears rained down. Remy hid inside the tree. The diversionary maneuver worked. The Begamini began their attack. A fierce battle ensued, during which the Begamini routed their opponents. Remy will go down in history as the Liberator. Later under his leadership, the Begamini drafted a blueprint for their future kingdom. Major construction work is about to take place. Rennie has grand plans for the future. He wants to build not just one city, but several. Construction work is in full swing. With knowledge from the 21st century, Rennie was advising the scientists. He also began to realize himself as an artist. He and Kara, by the way, were having an affair. However, in the real world, things aren't going very well for Remy. He still doesn't have a job and isn't taking care of the children. Remy was absent for not so long, but in the parallel world time flows differently, so Remy managed to grow a beard. The children didn't like it. When Lucille and Antoine came in, Remy tried to hide his beard, but he failed. Everyone in the house was puzzled. Later Lucille told Remy, with whom she is still officially married, that Antoine is involved in charity work. And since his apartment is currently occupied, African refugees will stay with him for now. Outside, Antoine approached Remy and asked him to hurry up with finding accommodation. At one point, Remy couldn't take it anymore and gave Antoine a thrashing in front of the refugees. Lucille had never seen her husband like this before. From now on, Remy has changed and learned to assert his opinion. He is no longer willing to endure humiliation. Remy went to the employment center in search of a job. Remy always dreamed of becoming an artist, but no one bought his paintings. So he became a restorer, although it didn't bring him pleasure either. Remy also mentioned that he knows how to lead construction crews, settle international conflicts and lead troops into battle. The employment center employee thought Remy had gone crazy. The only job they could offer him was as a distributor of advertisements for an Indian restaurant. However, Remy quickly got tired of it and simply threw away the leaflets. Suddenly, the world around him froze again. Remy dived straight into the road and found himself in another world, where his beloved awaited him. Here, Remy is happy because he is the idol of millions and a great commander. Remy wants to stay here forever. Even his children no longer hold him in that world. 
but is everything as good as it seems? A forum was held in the city, where many residents of the kingdom expressed dissatisfaction with the fact that under Remy's rule, they have to work a lot. Some were even not against returning to the rule of Zotan because despite the constant danger of becoming food, they led carefree lives. Remy was going to put down these riots, but he is losing his authority. The Begamini refused to obey his orders. Remy shouted that in exchange for freedom, they needed to work, but the people disagreed. Remy was pelted with raw eggs. Rioters caused disturbances in the streets of the kingdom. Only Kara and a few other loyal individuals did not turn away from Remy. To save his life, Remy returned to his own world, this time for good. It turned out he was no great commander after all. Since Remy had nowhere else to go, he asked his friend Serge for permission to stay in his workshop, which is empty. Of course Serge didn't refuse. Remy decided to restore the paintings he managed to save after the flood in the workshop. This way he returned to his work, and gradually life began to improve. Soon Lucille visited Remy and brought him the sword she found under the couch in the living room. Lucille misses her husband, although she herself made the decision to divorce. By the way Antoine now fears Remy. Seeing Delphine next to Remy, Lucille felt jealous but tried not to show it. Delphine was delighted with how Remy restored her painting. He refused to take money from her because it was her painting that saved him at the moment when he was ready to quit his job. However, Remy hinted that he wouldn't mind having dinner together as a thank you. It was a wonderful evening. Remy never expected Delphine to kiss him. Remy would have liked it to continue, but the next moment he found himself back in the parallel world. Of course without Remy, things were on the verge of chaos, and the people were once again under the oppression of Zotan. Now the Begamini want their savior to defeat the evil leader. Although the odds were not equal, Remy did it. Coming out of his fortress, Zotan fell and breathed his last. The Begamini rejoiced and prepared to fulfill the second part of the prophecy, to use Remy as food to gain his power. Remy ran away. The shaman burned the artifact that allowed him to move Remy between worlds. At the same time in the real world, Remy lay unconscious on the road while frightened Delphine called for an ambulance. The Begamini continued to hunt Remy, forcing him to hide in the forest. But one of the savages crept up behind him. Delphine, who was very worried, accompanied Remy in the ambulance while in the parallel world he tried to fend off the barbarians. Remy was rushed to the emergency room. His family arrived. Lucille clearly wasn't pleased to see Delphine here. Doctors don't know what's wrong with Remy, but his condition is rapidly deteriorating. To save her beloved, Kara pulled the artifact out of the fire and threw it into the water. At that moment, Remy regained consciousness in the emergency room. Remy didn't expect to see his entire family here. They were relieved that he was okay. Delphine would have liked to stay. Remy would have wanted to, but Lucille got in the way. Feeling superfluous, Delphine left. Lucille asks the husband to come home with her. She broke up with Antoine, realizing that she loves Remy after all. However, he had no intention of returning. Lucille never realized the pain she caused him. She still hopes that everything can be the same, but Remy made it clear that things will never be the same again. Some time later in Barcelona, Remy walked on the beach with his children. Now he wants to be a good father to them. Remy explained to his son and daughter that people who love each other never part. While the children played, Remy sat next to Lucille. He missed her too. Meanwhile in the parallel world, a monument was erected in honor of Remy. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel not to miss more exciting new products. Also the authors will be pleased if you leave your opinion in the comments.